If you could just have one lens for your Sony Alpha camera, which one would it be? Chances are that the 24 to 105 mm could be the answer. If you want to know everything that you need to know about this lens, just sit back, relax, and enjoy. Hey fellow photographer, it's Alessandro Carpentiero, travel photographer from Italy, and I want to welcome you to the Sony FE 24-105 f4 lens review. Actually, here on YouTube I have a weekly show where I talk about the latest news in the photography industry, plus I have giveaways going on. This month, for example, you can win a $500 carbon fiber tripod, so please consider subscribing not to miss any of that. Anyway, let's talk about lenses. If you are anything like me, you love lenses. They give a unique perspective of reality and help us express our own creativity. The only downside, well, except being an expensive game, is that they take up quite a lot of space in our bags. So even if you own a ton of lenses, sometimes you have to make a choice. Let's imagine that you have to go around for a walk with your family. You probably want to take pictures, but at the same time, you don't want to bring a backpack full of lenses with you, right? That's where all-around lenses come in, as they offer a good range of focal lengths in a single product. So let's dive deep in the Sony 24 to 105 mm lens review. Weight and dimensions. The lens weighs 663 grams, which is very similar to the weight of a camera. Just to give you an idea, the Sony 7R Mark IV weighs 665 grams. As for the dimensions, when collapsed, it's about 11 cm, while when extended, it's almost 20 cm. In general, I would say that the weight and dimensions are in line with these kinds of lenses, and it's also fairly portable. If you pair it with your Sony 7 camera, for example, the whole kit weighs about 1.3 kg, or 2.86 pounds. Build quality Sony does not state the material used to build this lens but I believe it's an aluminum polycarbonate mix. That being said, the lens is nicely built, it feels solid, and the material has a bit of a rugged finishing. It surely is a lens that I would take anywhere with me, and I have used it in a variety of scenarios. Features. As the majority of G-series lenses, the 24-105mm has all the important features a good lens must have. There is a smooth and silent focus ring, which is useful for videos too. Then we have the focus hold button, super convenient for when you have to recompose shots, and it can be easily reprogrammed for other actions too. Following, we have the zoom ring. The resistance is not super uniform, in fact, at least in my unit, the ring gets harder from 70mm onwards. Lastly, we have two super useful switches. The first is the AF-MF switch, and below it there is the optical steady shot switch. I always appreciate having such controls directly on the lens, as in this way I'm able to do all the needed adjustments without taking my eyes off the camera. If you think about it, this speeds up your operations and it decreases the chances of you missing shots. Other important features to mention are also the nano AR coating that reduces unwanted reflections and flare, and the fluorine coated front element that helps prevent fingerprints and stop dirt from sticking to the lens. Last but not least, the design is also dust and moisture resistant. Not waterproof, but still. I've used this lens under light rain and it performed great. Field of view. As you will see from the upcoming sample images, the field of view can vary a lot. This is the view at 24 mm and it slowly zooms in up to 105 mm. As you can see, the framing changes quite a lot, and this translates into having more creative freedom. Autofocus. The lens uses Sony's Direct Drive SSM, which is a linear focus motor. I found the autofocus to be reliable and very silent, which is something important when filming videos. Talking about focus, the minimum focus distance is just 38 cm, or 1.25 feet. And with the lens at 105 mm, you will reach a maximum magnification of 0.31x. It's not a macro lens, but it allows you to zoom in quite a lot. In fact, 
this is the lens I normally use to shoot my product reviews. While I'm on it, which product would you like me to review next? Just let me know in the comments and I will do my best to make that happen. Lacking features. Talking about controls, it would have been nice to have the focus distance scale. It's something that Sony doesn't add to its lenses, not even the GM ones, and I honestly don't understand why. In fact, having the focus distance scale can be very useful for certain kinds of photography. Besides that, this lens has everything you might need. Real life performances. It's now time to talk about how this lens performs in real life. I purchased it as soon as it came out in early 2018, just before I left for a three month trip in Asia. Back then, I used to have the Zeiss 24 to 70. Even if I don't use a telephoto lens for my photography, I felt that I was missing quite some shots by having a maximum reach of 70 mm. So that's why I decided to sell the 24 to 70 and get the 24 to 105. And let me tell you, that was a great idea. In fact, it gave me a lot more versatility in terms of framing, composition, and kinds of photography. I was able to take different shots than I was used to, and I ended up using this lens the most. Let's now take a look at some of the pictures I shot with it. In this case, I was in the middle of a rice field in Bali. I saw a farmer walking, and boom, I took the shot at 105 mm. While for this awesome sunset still in the rice field, I used it at 28 mm to include a broader view of the scene. This other shot is at 40 mm. While here I was at the top of a hill in Istanbul, Turkey, and I got a beautiful view of the city at 80 mm. The following morning, I snapped this shot of the Bosphorus Bridge slightly covered by the clouds at 105 mm. Oh, and by the way, you can check out my older videos if you want to see the behind the scenes of these shots. But anyway, as you can see, this is a very versatile lens. It's not just for landscapes. In fact, it proved to be an awesome choice for product photography too. Let's look at a few examples. Here's a shot I took for a cafe. Beautiful and creamy bokeh and tuck sharp. The same goes for this platter full of Italian prosciutto. I even used this lens to take some product shots for DJI of their Mavic Air, or to shoot a portrait of this monkey in the monkey forest in Bali. The sky's the limit in terms of what you can do with this lens. Pixel peeping. It's now time to do some pixel peeping of the most important aspects of this lens. Sharpness. First of all, is this lens sharp? I can tell you that I'm extremely happy with the sharpness of this lens. Coming from the Zeiss 24 to 70, I could see a big improvement in terms of sharpness. The center sharpness is really high from f4 to f16. With a slight decrease at f22, due, of course, to diffractions. The edges aren't as sharp at the center at wide apertures, but nothing major. The more you zoom in, the more you have to stop down the lens to reach the best sharpness throughout the whole frame. A range between f8 to f16 provides the best overall sharpness at all focal lengths. Distortions. Continuing with our pixel peeping, let's now take a closer look at the distortions of this lens. Let's start with chromatic aberration. Based on the lab tests, it's noticeable at the corners at 24 mm and it doesn't improve by stopping down the lens, while it's negligible from 50 mm onwards. In real life usage, I barely noticed any. As per the geometric distortion, the lens has some barrel distortion at 24 mm, which turns into pin cushion distortion from 35 mm onwards. Lastly, vignetting is very well controlled. We have less than minus one stop at 24 mm, but as soon as you stop down the lens or zoom in, you basically have none. At 24 mm though, I did notice a very heavy vignetting at the extreme corners, which doesn't really improve at higher apertures either. Nothing major, as it takes just a small portion of the frame and can be easily corrected in Lightroom. The wrap-up. This lens is a much needed addition to the Sony Alpha lineup, becoming, in my opinion, the best 
all-around lens of this system. In fact, it gives a lot of versatility to your photography, allowing you to have a good range of focal lengths to choose from, and it does so while delivering solid performances. In general, I think this is the lens for travel photography. If I would have to leave for a trip and bring just one lens with me, this would be my choice. Of course, I would miss having a wider field of view that lenses such as the 16-35 or 12-24 can deliver, but at the end of the day, I know that this lens would offer me more shooting opportunities than just a wide-angle zoom would. So, I surely recommend this lens to anyone who is looking for a versatile lens for their travel photography. Or, if you're looking for your first lens to pair with your new Sony Alpha camera, this is a perfect choice as you will be able to practice lots of different genres and with time, you will understand which other lenses you might need. So, that's it from me guys! I really hope you've enjoyed this review and if you did, please let me know by leaving a comment and by giving this video a big thumb up. I would really appreciate it. And if you have any questions, I'm always here to help. Actually, if you're looking for some guidance to improve your photography, I offer a free 20-minute Zoom call to every YouTube subscriber. If you're interested, just send me a DM on Instagram at alessandro underscore carpentiero or write me at support at alessandrocarpentiero.com and I will send you the link to book your call. So that's really it for today. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next one.